Greetings, it's Mikey Mouse again. This video is part 1.5 of the tutorial series, where I share some modeling tips for the model export. I do not intend to make this video a part 2, as it is still an add-on from the first part on getting the stuff together before diving straight into the components of the mods. A thing to note though, this tutorial will skip on how to 3D model, as there are better tutorials on the internet that guides how to use 3D modeling programs better than me. Another reason I am skipping is that I use Autodesk Maya instead of Blender, which is not as common for starters to pick up as their first 3D modeling program. However, I can share some modeling conventions that can most likely also be applied to Blender before exporting the model. Currently I am working on a Lewis machine gun model. An advice I have when creating models, is to have as much reference as you can get. Try to get image references that are from the side views and have as many angles as you can find. Another approach to do it is to look up on videos online or existing games that already have the stuff that you are working on. After looking up enough references, it's time to model the object. Here is a jump cut to the Lewis machine gun model that I have done and it is almost game ready, but there are some pointers that I have before heading for the export button. A thing to check on your model is the face normals. If the face normal is inverted, the face of the mesh will render on the wrong side and hence not appear. If the object is created with multiple separate meshes, such as a created cube, cylinder, remember to combine the meshes together such that it is one single mesh. The mesh of the main model, referred to as model underscore zero when compiling the asset in Unity. It is the main model needed and features the most details. We can now duplicate and make a slightly lower detailed version which is known as model underscore one. This step is optional, but it is better when it comes to optimization which helps in gameplay performance, how this helps is that the game will perform a model swap when the camera is a distance away from the object, and hence making the items less intensive to render. Now that the models are done, it is time to texture the model. The texture file can be just a simple two-color palette, created using any image editing software. The image file for the texture are best to be in a square dimension, example a 512 x 512 JPEG. Add more colors needed to the image file when necessary. The simple way of UV mapping the model is to select the UV face and move it to its corresponding color. However, this approach would not work if patterns are needed such as camo, the UV map of the model has to be properly unfolded rather than using the drag to the corresponding color approach. If you have a model underscore one, remember to UV map that model too. Before exporting the model for use in Unity, delete its item history. This is for Maya at least, I am not sure about Blender. For the export option use the FBX file format. This current model example is for guns, but this modeling approach in general can also be used for items. Here is a model example for vehicles. AT3485. The modeling best practices mentioned earlier in this video also applies here, but here are some other extra stuff I did other than the base model underscore zero and model underscore one. For this model file I have the wheels and the turret separate from the base model so that the road wheels and turret can be separately animated. In this case, I can make the wheels on the tank able to spin as it travels. Now that the models are done it's time to head to Unity. I have no intentions of teaching on how to use Unity, but here is just a crash course on the interface. Skip ahead from the button here if you already got the hang of it. To those who didn't skip this part, this is a very brief overview. Do look it up on your own if you want to know the better details. Near the top left above the hierarchy, there are some controls and options. This is the transform tool for moving the position of the game object. This is the rotate tool for rotating the game object. This is the scale tool to change the size of the game object. You can either change the tool by clicking the button, or using the shortcut keys W, E, and R. Another way to change the transform values is to type it in the inspector under the transform attribute. 
Aligning manually in the scene view is faster in general, but if there are certain values that you already know its number, it is faster to just type it in instead. In the scene window, you can change the camera angle by holding down middle click to drag around. And hold down the right click to look around. While holding down right click, you can use WASD controls to move around. If you have somehow lost sight of the game object you are working on and can't find it back, head to the hierarchy and double click on the name to snap the camera on the double click game object. The scene gizmo at the top right of the scene window allows you to change to the planar views easily. Clicking the cube at the center of it allows you to switch the camera between perspective view and orthographic view. Orthographic view is great when you need to place at pinpoint positions but ultimately the models will appear in perspective view. Please understand that this is a very brief overview on the interface. If you want to learn more on Unity in general, either look up on other tutorials or read up on the official documentation by Unity themselves. To import the FBX file you can simply drag and drop it into the project window below after entering the desired folder. If the imported model appears too small in Unity, you can adjust the import settings from the inspector after selecting the object. From the model tab in the import settings, change the scale factor. I personally do it this way as I want to apply the settings to all the meshes in the file, although you can scale the objects one by one from the game objects. Remember again, there is no wrong method to making stuff as long as it works. If you want to use the default assets such as seats, wheels, and engine audio from Unturned, you can import from their sample asset package as mentioned in the previous video. And grab the game object from the item prefab. As long as you do not reapply the prefab, it is okay to break the prefab link. For the last part of this video, to compile the asset bundles, it's just as simple as pressing the build asset bundles button. Just make sure that the folder of the item to want to compile is done correctly. The next video that I am working on will be how to make vehicles in Unturned. Give it a like or a comment if this video helped. Catch you guys in the next video.